Hey everyone, it's Alex, and in this video, we're discussing the best spotlight caches to spend your hard earned resources in in Marvel Snap for February 2024. This month has a lot of very interesting cards, and honestly, it's kind of like a downward step though. We kind of start at the highest and we kind of move towards the lowest in terms of value, in my opinion. But a lot can change in Marvel Snap. We have patches, OTAs, so balance is constantly shifting with the meta. But one thing that is a little concerning that I just want to briefly mention is this might be the last time we can do a video like this because Second Dinner is removing the, um, the spotlight cache information from the data mines, which the, basically gets rid of the forward-looking data we need to make videos where we kind of say, okay, these are the weeks that look like they're gonna be providing the most value. This is somewhat problematic for a free-to-play player who has to work really hard to save their resources in order to maximize their collection progress when there's a week like this, if you're missing Darkhawk and Zabu, this is an absolutely incredible week, right? But if you didn't know this week was coming and you spent all your resources in the week prior, you're looking at this super sad, right? Super disappointed. And so I do think there's a lot of value with that forward planning element. Um, and it's a little unfortunate those data mines, which were never set in stone anyway, but at least there were an indication of what was coming. So I do have some plans as to how we can do it on a week to week basis with some more of a statistical analysis. So if you find that type of stuff helpful, consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with those types of videos. Regardless, that is almost a topic for a whole other video. Let's discuss the spotlight caches themselves. Darkhawk Zabu is perfect. You really want these cards in your collection. If you do not have these two cards, this is a beyond roll because you want these two cards. You have to have them. If you have, Darkhawk and Zabu, then Supergiant I think is going to be a pretty good card. It's going to be a decent player in the meta, and it's, it's not like at a broken level right now. We haven't quite solved the card yet. It's still early, but it's good. It does a thing. It's defensive. It's offensive. It's pretty interesting. It's not doing what Blob did to the meta by any means. It's not taking over, but it's good. The key winner here is Darkhawk Zabu, and it's also worth knowing that Secondary is doing a good job of like packaging cards together in spotlight caches that work well. So you're not just getting an individual card, you're kind of getting pieces of a deck you can start to build around, which I think is super valuable. So we saw this with High Evolutionary a couple weeks back as well. So anyways, we move to the next week here. In February 13th to 20th, we have Cull Obsidian, Nimrod, and Thanos. It's a four-star week overall, in my opinion. I actually really like Cold City, and I think this card is really interesting. I listen, 410 power, uh, scar value, uh, it's, just, it's just 410 power. And even if, like, hey, that's in Shang-Chi range, well, then yeah, sure, they're going to commit a four drop to take out your four drop, which is fine, but it's only a net, you know, plus three power with Shang-Chi, and now you get to pull your other big cards, anyways, right? So I don't know. If they have to commit Shang-Chi to a four power, uh, sorry, a four costed Cold Obsidian, I mean, you're getting it out of the game, right? So that's not always a bad thing. So I actually think that Cull Obsidian is going to be pretty decent. The other side to this is that you can actually play Cull Obsidian. Let's say you're on turn five or even turn four of Zabu. Okay, that's remember it's a Zabu based card too. So if let's say you're on turn four and you have Zabu on the board, you can actually play Cull Obsidian at three and a one drop was like at the same turn. You can actually stage the one drop and then play Cull Obsidian on top. Okay, it's not like other cards like. Uh, this is a good example of this. Uh, I mean, I was going to say Crossbones. We're like, you know how, like, it's not even a good example, but Crossbones, like, you just can't put them on the field of play at all. Well, Call Obsidian, if you put the one drop as you're playing the turn, you can actually play Call Obsidian into that location. So you, you can stage it prior to the actual, like, uh, the turn. So that's pretty cool. Nice to see. Gives it a little bit of added flexibility. And it honestly makes the condition not that hard. Compared to Crossbones, the condition's basically nothing. So going to be a really cool card. I'm actually looking forward to it. Nimrod's good. Nimrod's a good card. It's just kind of beat up in the meta right now. I give it a two stars. It's also a series four card, which kind of uh, reduced value, I guess. But it's decent. It's good. It's just there are other versions to destroy that reach higher, right? The Deadpool version is just better. Like, I like playing Nimrod. Like, you have the Nimrod Shuri base package with, like, Destroyer or with, like, Venom Carnage Deathlock. Like, those type of combo plays. And they're fun. They're good but they're not as good as Deadpool. So as long as the Deadpool version of Destroy is better, you're just always going to play that version, right? And also this Nimrod will always lose to a Null in that deck, right? You're blowing, like, Destroy is 10% of the meta. So if you're playing a Nimrod-based package and you're blowing up all your Nimrods and they're flying all over the place super wide like a zoo and they just, like, 
play null, you just lose, right? So that's kind of the problem with Nimrod right now. And Thanos, I mean, you got to get Thanos. Thanos, five stars. I mean, this card has been absolutely broken multiple times in the meta, has been nerfed multiple times, continues to be one of the absolute best decks, best cards in the game. Uh, thematically, a completely different kind of, uh, kind of gameplay experience, deck building experience. It's a total new way to play Marvel Snap if you don't have Thanos already. Could not recommend it enough. This is a roll week. I like it a lot. Nimrod is a little on the weaker side, but honestly, I think Call Obsidian is going to surprise a lot of people. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. But I uh, Thanos, I mean, the track record speaks for itself. You need Thanos in your collection. You go to February 20th and to the 27th. Uh, we have uh, Corvus Glaive, Gladiator, and X-23. Listen, I'm I'm low on Corvus Glaive. I, I would almost give him a two-star, honestly. Like, I don't think this card's going to be good. Uh, Cozy's on the opposite side. Cozy thinks this card's going to be really good. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I average both my and Cozy's, give it three stars. Because, listen, Cozy's going to believe in it. Like, I, I see that. But I just don't. I don't see this card being that good. I just don't. So, I'm a little lower on it. And then you have Gladiator, which is fun. It's a good card. It's actually one of my favorite cards in Snap to play. A 3 8 has its downsides. It's making its way into some decks, ironically. It's pretty damn solid. It's a three star card. It's finding meta decks. I mean, how do you argue against 3 8 power? It's legit. And the X 23 is a staple, an absolute staple in Destroy. It's not going to carry Destroy, but. It's in every single destroy deck because that extra energy on turn six allows for like Null Deadpool or whatever, right? Zola and like it gives you a lot of added flexibility, especially when Deadpool is as prevalent in the meta as it is. X-23, a great option there. For the new card, Corvus Glaive, this feels like one of the most skippable uh, cards of the month for me. Um, but again, I tend to be wrong from time to time, so who knows? But this this week is a much weaker week, especially when you consider, you know, Zabu Darkhawk and Thanos in prior weeks, right? This one doesn't stand out nearly as much as the others. Then we go to February 27th to the 5th. Um, I think this is a weaker week. You have Modok, you have Dokken, and of course you have Proxima and Midnight. What's interesting about this is once again, you're getting a package of cards that should work together. Modoc should work synergistically with Proxima Midnight. Also works really well with Dokken because the Dokken shard goes into your hand. You never have to commit to discarding it because you just Modoc and you blow it up anyway. Proxima gets blown up and discards regardless, right? So I do like what they're doing here. They're trying to give you a package of cards and at its whole, Proxima's probably pretty good. I think it has some decent potential. Um, but like at the same time, I don't know if it's going to completely shake things up for discard. The Black Knight style discard deck seem to just be better than the Modoc style kind of like actual discard type of deck, but uh, it does provide some sort of like targeted discard. It goes to the lowest power location. And uh, I think Dokken is low key actually a really strong card. What really brings the value of this particular week down is it's just series four cards like Modoc series four, Dokken series four, and Proxima Midnight's gonna be series five, but it's like, the card's probably not that good. And it's very, very niche. Even if it's really good for discard, right? Which it probably will be, it's super niche. If you don't put, you're not just adding this card to like, you know, like the way you added blob to everything, right? Like it just doesn't work like that. Very niche. So I think that this week is definitely the most skippable, which is okay, because you get to save your resources for all the FOMOing that'll happen without the data mines. Oh man, that's we're gonna have to talk about that maybe in a couple days. Regardless, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Hit the like button if you'd like to support this content. Got another video for you right here on the screen, and we'll see you in the next Marvel Snap video.